Grixis mid-range deck. Uh, the person that submitted it submitted it as Grixis Steal Your Girl, I believe was their was their title. So they've got Captivating Crew and Thief of Sanity and Hostage Taker and Angrath and lots of lots of ways to lots of ways to borrow cards that your opponent has played out. Eldest Reborn as well. I think not playing Thought Erasure in the main deck is probably a bit of a miss, but because we can play the individual cues, I'm going to go ahead and play a couple of a match or two with it as is before I make any changes to it. Am I a professional player? So between the years of 2014 and 2016, I traveled to play in a lot of the SCG Tour events. For people that are not familiar with those, that is, they are the largest independent magic circuit in the world. Uh, they had a Players Championship tournament in those years where 16 players qualified for that, and I qualified for two of those tournaments. I have like 15 top eights from their Open Series events, which are large open entry tournaments that tend to have, you know, uh, 500 to 1500 players somewhere in there. So I've played a lot of competitive magic. These days, I don't really travel to play much magic because traveling to play magic doesn't really make or derive any real income. So streaming, however, you know, I currently have, you know, 2000 and some odd subscribers here. So that this is my job. I love playing magic, but traveling to play it cannot be a job really while streaming and making content for it can be. It's pretty reasonable. Get to have a have a discard spell into a hostage shaker potentially here. A lot of people take professional card game player to mean you play tournaments as your profession, I think. Warlord's Fury. So some of the older versions of Drake decks played more cards like these. So I'm assuming to see a hand of Drake-like cards. Dire Fleet Poisoner is going to be really bad here. Dire Fleet Poisoner is a card that tends to be good because it can trade with things inside of combat, where here it's not going to be able to do that. Although if I attack with this and they block with this, Dire Fleet Poisoner is going to get them, so that sounds sweet. Oh, should have played the tap land. Whatever. Yeah, Warlord's Fury means they're playing Phoenixes. Ha-ha! You've activated my trap card, Yugi boy. They are never going to block ever again. Just that was that was the last time they're blocking this game, this match. One hostage, please. That one, yoink. This curve was pretty good this game. viewer count is higher which makes ad revenue go up a little bit with arena but my actual subscriber count i was over 2,000 subscribers just doing magic online so i'm sure i have gained new subscribers that i've gotten from arena that i wouldn't have just doing magic online but i think i've also most likely dropped a few people who stopped subscribing because i'm not doing as much modern and legacy content as i watch was with just magic online Yeah, probably. I should have hostage taker pre-combat. I agree with that assessment. These dire fleet poisoners probably aren't very good here. Our Niv Mizzet seems fine. This sideboard, this card is not a playable magic card. We're gonna. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think I need we're gonna we're gonna readjust the sideboard after after this game for sure. I have a bunch of moment of cravings in my deck too. 
We should, there should definitely be some mix of lava coils and cast downs, probably at least three of each, specifically for the drinks matchup. Uh, honestly, on average, I have more fun playing Arena and Standard than I do playing Magic Online a lot of the time. Like, obviously, playing Modern on Magic Online and Legacy is not a bad gig for a job, but like, if I could do just arena and like still have this be my source of income, I probably would. And I think eventually it will get to that point, especially once arena has a non-rotating format. I think like variety is really important. Like one of the reasons why magic such a great game is because there's so many different formats that you can play in magic. So like just playing standard all the time might also get a little bit dry. So I'm definitely not going to attempt to do all arena until we get a second constructed format on this application. But you know, once we get a second constructed format, there's probably a good chance I move more and more towards more arena and less, less magic online. I think I think the mix I have the mix I have right now seems like it could potentially be a good one. I've got like a couple hours of the older formats in the morning and then arena all afternoon. Yes, yeah, it's it's basically impossible to follow magic online content if you don't know what every card on your screen does. No, there's no interactive overlay. Happy to see you streaming. Enjoy watching your stuff. Scrum, thank you for the five-month resub. I appreciate that. Thank you for the tier two resub. Be sure to drop me a message in private. Let me know which deck in the queue you'd like to bump this month. As always, my tier two subs support me a little bit extra so they get to bump something up. I think I'd actually rather have an up tier. I want to dig for answers to the sniff visit. All right, well, I feel like we got away with something there because our, our answers definitely don't line up fantastically into what the opponent has going on. Let's, uh, let's reposition. I think I'm going to play the main deck card for card again to try and get a little bit more of a feel of it, but this sideboard is definitely more than a little bit of a mess. Actually, I might split. Yeah, I'm a little bit of a liar, actually. I'm going to move some of these moment decree things. I'm going to put some cast downs in my main deck. What are cards in the sideboard? This amulet of safekeeping is kind of silly. Scriptures I could take or leave. I think I want, I think I want some lava coils. I know we only have 12 red sources, but lava coil is like a pretty premium removal spell in this format. I like that one a lot. I've got a Niv, Negate, Duress, and Banefire. There's a lot of anti-control cards in my sideboard. Let's trim at least one of those. I don't want to make too many changes. We've got a bunch of moment of cravings. I don't think I want to add anything like cannonade because that kills a lot of my own creatures as well. I guess we have a lot of pirates in our deck, which is kind of funny. Right, let's let's try this. Made a couple of small changes. So here's here's the thing you need to realize about a card like Niv Mizzet, especially out of the sideboard in a deck like this. So this deck. It doesn't need to cast niv -Mizzet immediately on turn six because it's not going to have it on turn six most games. Most of your games against control decks are going longer, so it's okay to have Niv in a deck that might otherwise not be able to cast it till turns like seven, eight, or nine consistently because your games against control decks are going to go to turn seven, eight, or nine. I mean, I still plan to go to paper tournaments on occasion, like the the Nerd Rage Gaming series that's rotating on my scroller here. Part of uh, part of my sponsorship agreement with them, too, in addition to them paying for the banners, they give me free entry fee entry into their tournaments every month. So like, their tournaments are like pretty close to me. They're usually like less than a two hour drive. If they're you know less than two hours, like Matt leaves from my town anyway, so I can like hitch a ride with him and then hop in for free too. I'm probably gonna be playing in a number of their tournaments this week. Does the BCW link apply to anything that I can buy on their site? So the 20% off code only applies to the things in that initial search, Iceman. However, my normal BCW discount code applies to everything on their site. Yeah, the Nerd Rage Gaming Tournaments, they're a Midwest tournament series. So Midwestern United States. They go to uh, Chicago, uh, Wisconsin, Iowa, 
uh, here where I live in Bloomington and some places in Indiana. Yeah, they do stream the events. Twitch.tv forward slash NRG series. And I'll, I'll tweet and stuff when I'm playing in their tournaments too. So if you follow me on Twitter, you'll know when I'm playing in a paper weekend. Winjus, thank you very much for the brand new Prime support. I appreciate that. Welcome. Thanks for keeping me employed here. Uh, they go to Milwaukee, I think. I'm not sure where their, where their Wisconsin stop is. It's either Milwaukee or Madison, one of the two. If you look on their website, it should be listed. So, do they want to throw this away to not let me draw a card off the top of their deck? They might. All right, have my giant 4-4, please. Enjoy. It's Milwaukee? Okay. I thought, and I couldn't, I couldn't remember. I knew it was one of the two. If the opponent's playing a pre-constructed deck, maybe we've taken enough of a beating today that our MMR's dropped enough to uh, to get to that point in our lives. There's a good, there's a good chance. Yeah, all of the the mythic dragons and angle angels have A plus animations. This is bringing all my cheap removal spells. Probably trim some of my more expensive plays. Yeah, Vana. A lot of the mythics have really good animations. This one's a little clunky. Need two more cuts here. Angrath is pretty reasonable because he kills their things after he takes them. Maybe Eldest Reborn's the trim. You can also see trimming some copies of Discovery. Their deck's a little bit aggressive, so I don't always necessarily have time to... Uh... I think Vana, Vana is likely going to be very playable in the in the in the next set. When we have Gob the Shrine to make Vana a little bit more consistent around it. Seems real good. Removal spell into Thief into Nicobolas. Okay, Sale takes our card, but we still get to play Dire Fleet Poisoner out here, which is fine. Not amazing, but fine. Perfect. Let's take a look at what you got. I showed you mine. Now you can show me yours. We can all be happy and friends here together. Um... Hmm. And you suggest a source to learn Modern or Legacy. Yeah, my website. There are, there are ton, I've done I've done a ton of non-rotating format content that you can find. I'm gonna go no blocks here because they could have a dire fleet poisoner. Prefer prefer not to get poisoned into the stern. Yeah, yeah. You can always find the deck list for the current deck I'm playing on the on, on the screen via the stream decker widget. Alternatively, you can type exclamation point deck in chat to get a direct link to the deck list. Wow, they had the poisoner. Uh, I don't have any strong recommendations or feelings about things in Legacy right now because I haven't I haven't spent a ton of time recently playing the format. Just very recently started playing matches of Legacy again. Boop. Boop him. Boop him on the nose. Just like trade this cast down in for another cast down, basically. How dragons go? We didn't get to dragons today, so we had a couple of cut the line donations this morning, so I had to push off a couple of things at the tail end. 
I'm already already running late today. We've been going for seven and a half hours already, and I want to play this deck for another hour and then do one more probably. So you can see here, my opponent keeps holding up this essence scatter and I'm basically just tempoing them here. I'm just choosing to not play into the essence scatter and playing my cards at their end step and they're just not getting to use their mana. And while I am ahead on board, then every turn they don't use their mana is a win for me. So they sit there and hold up their reactive card and I don't give them anything worth reacting to while slowly inching ahead with what's already in play. Yeah, Dire Fleet Poison is a very playable card. It's very, very reasonable. It's one of the cards that pulls blue-black pirates together for sure. Just like it's a removal spell, that's also a combat trick. Seems very reasonable. Uh, I don't play in the constructed leagues because I like the flexibility to be able to edit my deck in between games. In between matches, sorry. Whatever it's called. It does kill Carnage Tyrant. It's like a surprise, kill your Carnage Tyrant. So I am gonna choose to not play the hostage take the Dire Fleet Poisoner out here because I want them to attack this into the Dire Fleet Poisoner next turn. If they don't have an Explore creature, which usually they do, but if they don't have an Explore creature, I get to eat this for free. Gobble, gobble. Deal. No, I don't really care about Pauper or Probos. Oh, um, nom 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 nom. Um, nom 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 nom. Gobble gobble. Yoink. I'm going to hang tight on attacking with this because if they kill this, I want to be able to block the goblins. Frenzy's a little bit scary, potentially. This is a high variance play from the opponent. This could be very good for them or very bad, depending on how kind the top of their deck is. I'm good on land. Thank you. All right. B. Aggressive. B. E. Aggressive. Get him. They only, if they only hit one big fatty off the top of their deck this turn, I'll be able to hostage take rip. This deck is definitely living up to its title so far. It's borrowing lots of the opponent's cards. Charge. All right, your move. This is all I get. Sword Tooth is very good. It's going to be blocking very soon. Goes the weasel. Do, 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 do. I think I'm gonna cut this card just from the deck in general. This seems this seems exceedingly clunky. I think it's just gonna be my go-to trim here for now. That might be. I might just work honestly, just like starting the lava coils in the main might be fine. Just like having more anti anti control stuff in the board. Lava coil is just like a pretty premium removal spell in the format. That could also help me fit Thought Erasure in. I would not mind having some more discard spells. The discard spell Thief of Sanity Curve is very good. Discard spells before Hostage Taker are also great because it helps your Hostage Taker not die if you tap out for it on four. Now, I think I don't really care about being Fire Slash Frenzy. I think I'd rather just like go around them or go through them. Captivating Crew is on theme, I agree. And that's why I played the first couple of games with him, but I don't want to be a slave to the theme. I just want to play cards that are like reasonable. I'm going to be greedy and bottom that because I'd like to draw a basic or a shock land so these lands can come into play untapped. 
Perfect. Never didn't have it, etc., etc. I think I'm actually going to pass the turn here because they're pretty likely to have a three drop, and I'd like to cast down their three drop and then untap and play Thief of Sanity. Just a 2-1. I think I'm committed to using my mana here. Using a removal spell on their divination doesn't feel great, but eh. It's a tough break. Sixth land, we'll definitely take a Thief of Sanity. Getting the removal spell out of their hand on our Thief feels good because it means our Hostage Shaker is more likely to survive. That's probably unbeatable at this point. No Need to draw like Eldest Reborn oh, this yeah. turn. Angrath might also help us keep pace with her, but Vivian's gonna bury us very quickly otherwise. Thief of Sanity has whatever the opposite of Hexproof is, right? I mean, like, I can play this, but they're just gonna, like, down tick Vivian and kill it. So, I'm pretty far gone here. Especially with, like, the Carnage Tyrants and other cards they're gonna have in their hand still. Yeah, I think, I think I'm gonna cut the Captivating Cruise and two copies of Discovery for Fourth Thought Erasure. Get a little bit more interaction and some, uh, some more discard in the main. Seems like not amazing, but fine. Yeah, I think Hostage Shaker would probably be too good if it took Planeswalkers. Good, good chance. Yeah, Thought Erasure is a proactive way to like deal with Planeswalkers and stuff like that too, card assurance. Maybe I'm just supposed to Craving take their thing here. It's possible to kill the elf on one is better. Would we'll slow them down a good deal. Just like kind of had my plays lined up in my head and ran with it. It's on theme for the Hostage Shaker to take artifacts though, right? I mean, like, look at these games here when it comes to talking about counter spells. One of the things people don't think about enough of the time, I think, is that how the games tend to play out when you're bringing out a when you're bringing in counter spells. If you're playing a game where you're frequently tapping out, counter spells probably aren't what you want to be doing in that game. And I feel like this deck is frequently going to be tapping out, which is why things like discard spells tend to be better than counter spells. There's real good for us. We get to pay two. We get to play Eldest Reborn. Make them sacrifice the Branch Walker. Smack them for two. You think we're dead? Why are we dead? I think we're ahead. They don't, they don't hit a red source this turn. I think we're pretty far ahead at the moment. Hey, LPL Tick, thanks for the brand new Prime support. There's a lot of great people making a lot of great stuff on Twitch right now. Thanks for supporting mine this month with that. Yeah, they're, fumb they're fumbling on both raw, raw number of lands and on the, uh, the colors that they need. So this is kind of an awkward take if they hit their red source next turn, but if they don't hit the red source next turn, this Elders Reborn should bury them. They did just give me a dino. One Carnage turn, please. Once 
Let's just get pressure on the table rather than Elders reboard them. If they miss on red again next turn, they should be up a creek without a pedal. Sure. Would you like to see what's left of this? This is nothing. Do I even attack them with this? I guess I'm kind of dead to Banefire regardless. Not really. I'm a survivor. They have land Banefire we die. So they literally can't attack with this next turn, right? So I should do... Actually, I'll leave this one back to chump block, so I'm not even dead to Banefire. Yep, that's what we'll do. Because this can't attack or block unless they have the City's Blessing. Was going to get back into Paper Magic today, got to the LGS to find- Oh, that's sad. Ar Arena is super convenient as far as playing Magic goes, that's for sure. Yes, yeah, so I think I think I'd like some Thought Erasure here. I think playing Blue Black and not playing Thought Erasure is kind of a miss. Just end up on the small red splash here, I think is fine. Give this a go and pop back in. I love the flexibility to be able to change decks in between matches. Feels way better than being locked into playing it for the entire time. Get to kind of tune and iterate and change. How's everybody doing tonight? Hope you're having a good Friday wherever you're at. What does export do? Export copies the deck list to my clipboard, which I then paste into a text file and then upload to the stream decker. So that way the deck list that's embedded on your screen gets updated after I make changes. Ugh, tapped lands. I think I keep this, but I'd really like to draw a shock or a basic here. Angrath is quickly becoming my favorite Planeswalker in Standard. He's so sweet. Hey -o, hey -o. Nothing but professionalism here, chat. Nothing, nothing but professionalism. Kind of red white control deck. That just dies to my cast down. Let me get rid of that. I can play Kite Sail, take this other card next turn. Because this way they have to draw a third removal spell here to deal with the Kite Sail. I'm just gonna go ahead and play this out here just to get my extra point of damage in. I don't really save much by by not playing it out. Next turn I'm like certainly playing a five mana spell. Just 
Sure. Yeah, Angrath on an empty board while they still have cards in their hand is just like pretty unbeatable. Like, all right, how about how about we like tick up, like, get rid of get rid of all your choices. Even if they keep the angel and then like rip a land for the angel, I get to Eldest Reborn it. And if they don't rip a land, Angrath just like keeps chewing away at their hand here. I think I think there's a good chance. We lost Oops. enough matches with the Soul Timer Folk deck today and a couple of the other decks we got beat up a little bit that our MMR dropped. That is Legacy Staple Angrath. It is, is in fact, Legacy Staple Angrath. You to use Legacy cards instead, right? Hey, Assassin's Trophy is like technically a Legacy card too, right? Uh, I don't know what the opponent's doing. I'm going to cut these Moment of Cravings and put these Lava Coils in because it's a little bit better removal spell. Which video should I watch to be in on the Legacy Staple and Grath joke? Um, the Mardu Control deck from this morning will get published later. We did end up 3 2 with Angrath in our Legacy deck. It was quite excellent. Enter the battlefield tapped. I want to be untapped, though. Like, comment, subscribe, and ring that bell. Ring a ding ding. Tradesies? No, tradesies. Hey, right, Coily Bird. Look at that. Much better than Moment of Craving. Killed a 2 3. Moving on up in the world. Moving on up in the world. Smash that like button. He's dead, Jim. You killed him. You're a murderer. I guess technically it didn't die. It was exiled. Waiting. Waiting for some hostages. Waiting. Waiting for some hostages. So, oh, I can't kite sail freebooter them. So next turn, I can hostage taker plus replay the Shalai in the same turn. A Zintoth with the sub gifty. Thanks for the support. I appreciate it. So they Shalai gives them hexproof as well. So Kite Sail cannot uh, cannot dig into their hand there. Come so far. The old post combat make my creature bigger. Born Got it. Strength. Born of struggle. <laughs> And, uh, and now we have a Shalai to protect our next hostage taker. Just good, good, clean. Some good, clean synergy there. Waiting, waiting till eight mana to play the hostage taker and grab the Shalai means they can't just like play a removal spell on my hostage taker the next turn if I play it on seven mana. 
This way I got to play it and then immediately, immediately replay what it had taken. Yeah, so it didn't die to something like Deafening Glareon. All right, let's take a peekaboo at what's going on up there. We did, we did steal their, steal their gal. They brought in Fiery Cannonade. Okay, yeah. You let me know how that one works out for you. Give Ajani a little love tap. There is a We're, we almost, we have nine mana. This is our 10th. So if they play a six drop, we can play a hostage taker and play their six drop immediately. <laughs> Whoopsie. You are capable of more than you assume. That was the best part about playing straight blue black pirates was all the people who would like try and fiery cannonade you just be very embarrassed. It's just like, oh, awkward, awkward. Woof, woof. Our Nova, our Nova has been cleansed. Well, the good news is if we draw a Nickel Bolas, we can play and flip him in the same turn. That's, that's the good news. Arjun, well, thanks for dropping in today. Glad you enjoy it. And if you are enjoying it, hit the follow button. Let you know when I go live. I'm here five days a week, usually Monday through Friday, about uh, nine to five, a little bit past. We stole their gal again. We got him. This gives all of our creatures vigilance, which makes these uh, these seal aways super awkward. If the, the little did they know their technology would be used against them. Kick it. All right, well, that'll be good when they play a threat. We're flooding here a little bit, but they stumbled as such, so we've had time to draw out of it, which is nice. Their cards are just so beautiful. I felt like I needed to use them myself. Gobble, gobble. Am I crazy or did Arena not always make you click your only choice for things like this? Like if there's only one thing you could sacrifice, it just sacrificed it at one point, right? Instant coffee drink. Thank you for the eight month three sub. I appreciate the two thirds of a year. Welcome back. It seems like such a weird thing to change. I really, I really liked. Sometimes they made you pick. That's so weird. When a spell or ability causes you to discard, whenever a creature plays dark control dies, you may sacrifice to make a 4-4, four, four, sure. likely as a battlefield exile target online permanence our opponent is likely someone who's not experienced they're probably 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 a newer magic player our kinship ensures our victory 
I thought he had a dire fleet poisoner in there. Guess not. Yeah, the interactive overlay is A plus fantastic. Oh, it got lava coiled, your super eight. A Johnny is a pirate's best friend. All right. All right, onward, up, we're back, before. I actually think this is gonna be, I think I'm gonna leave Jun Dinos in the queue for next time. I'm starting, starting to drag a little bit. And when the energy goes down, I, I don't, not quite as edutaining. So we're gonna play, we're gonna finish this deck out. We're gonna play for another half hour or so, but then I'm gonna go ahead and call it a day. It'll be about eight and a half hours live, which is closer to my, close to my limit at this point. We started earlier than expected the day. Hey, Milk Steak. Thanks for the two month resub. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me employed here. Fun and checking out some other options here. So we stopped playing in the events because there's no ladder because the traditional thing that we're playing in right now has a hidden MMR matchmaking. And we've been playing against a pile of like decks that are like tiered decks and realistic, but we might have we might have gotten beat up enough today that uh, our MMR probably dropped enough to pair us into random things. Also like the events aren't 100% tiered decks either. There are lots of budget decks and awkward plays in the, in the constructed events too. There's this really, this, there's this really terrible idea among TCG players that like, if you're willing to gamble, you must be a better player, which is just such nonsense to me. There are plenty of people who have plenty of extra money and don't mind gambling, who are terrible at magic or terrible at games in general. I don't, I don't, I don't understand the, this idea that I guess, I guess probably something that people say to encourage themselves to gamble. Do you recommend this list as best of one? I have no idea. I don't play best of one magic. It's just not a format that I enjoy. Yeah, someone, someone linked, someone linked me a thing that was one of the devs on the Magic Arena forums talking about the this queue using an, a hidden MMR for pairing people. And I'm like, obviously just because it uses an MMR doesn't mean it's always gonna pair you into people of similar deck quality and stuff like that and play, play level, but it's gonna get close. So I don't wanna play Thief of Sanity just out into this lava coil. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pass and then step Dire Fleet Poisoner. If you're looking for a sweet pirate deck, there is a blue black pirates deck that's a dedicated pirates deck on my website. Probably. It's it's okay for best of one. You might want to the main deck is definitely set up for best of three. I'd probably put more hostage shakers and removal spells in the main deck if I was playing best of one to hedge aggro decks, but probably be tooled around to play play for best of one. Alright, well let's kill this one with fire, shall we? like to draw two lands, please. That's true. Blue Black Pirates does not have wonderful Angrath animations. Which, what are you really doing in your life if you're playing Arena and not experiencing uh, throwing hammers at people's faces? It's truly, truly the best part of the entire experience. We really want to try and hit some lands here, get some pressure going, because my opponent has the search for Escanta active now, which is just going to bury us in card advantage as the game goes along. Even 
you've activated my trap card opponent. I was thinking about playing this just to get more pressure into play anyways. But sh 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 hit him with the pocket sand. Get him. Get him. Nice timing on the shock. And you, you can't even say, like, they didn't know Dire Fleet Poisoner was something they might want to play around because, like, there's literally a Dire Fleet Poisoner in play. The old, the old rusty Shackleford. Give him the pocket sand. All right, sweet. We got we got two lava coils and a shock out of them. I'm gonna call that ooh perfect. I would say the coast is clear enough, but let's do this now. It might be right to just stick the thief here, honestly. I'm gonna get like spell pierced and feel bad. We might, we might yeah, this sucks. I probably should have just played thief there. We just got that going. We might lose the war, but we definitely we won that battle. We have we have the moral high ground, okay? And see, the problem here is they get to start activating this Ads Canto, which makes them incredibly likely to be able to kill my or not. Sure. Sure. Did they forget they have a flipped Ads Canto? They must have. All right, did you find a way to kill this? If this gets to connect, we can pull our claw our way back into this game. We have a dive down, that sucks. All right, so I'm gonna attack with this. They're gonna block. I'm gonna moment of craving. They're gonna dive down, I'm gonna cast down. Shishisha! All right, got him. Got him. I always love when they do what you tell them to do. God bless. One, two punch. Old one, two punch, hook, line, and sinker. God bless the stack. For 4D chess. Yep, it looked like I was trading two of my cards for one of theirs when, like, in reality, in reality, we were going to get them and get a two for one. Killerine, thank you for the two-month resub. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me employed here. So if we're a true professional, for a true professional, this Thief of Sanity is going to draw us a dive down here to protect our hostage taker. Spell Pierce. I'll settle for Spell Pierce. Uh, Nerd Rage Gaming is located in the northwest Chicago suburbs, but their tournament series is all over the Midwest. They go to Wisconsin. They go to... Uh, they're actually going to be having one of their tournaments in Bloomington, where I live in March. How big is this crackling, Drake? It's only a four. What's going on, Type? Hope you're having a good evening. So this, when it changes sides, counts my graveyard all of a sudden. So it won't be a 15 on my side. It'll be a four on my side. I think I'm supposed to just do this and plus. Ever seen water burn? Ever seen water burn? 
No Dunk. fire, no steel. No fire, no steel. What's going on? What CD? Thanks for the brand new Prime support. Thanks for keeping me employed here this month. There's a lot of great people making a lot of great stuff on Twitch. Thanks for supporting mine with your Bezo bucks. Chat, chat lethal has in fact been called. Woof, we could be dead. We could be dead. We're dead to lightning strike. Uh, we're probably dead to another shock. They kept the card on top. That can't bode well for our hero. Yikes. Scale of one to dead. What are we working with here? Just another Drake. Okay. Ah, you'll be nothing but slag when I'm done. Oh, what a tilt. If chat, if they block, they get they get Niv Mizzet back. I, I'm not dead. I can I can concoct and put a blocker into play. I'm like mostly dead, but we're not we're technically not all dead. He is only mostly dead. Uh, this is about when I'm going to be going to most days now, each each war. So I, uh, I've rearranged my schedule a little bit. So I'm doing uh, 9 or 10 in the morning till about 5 o'clock most afternoons. That was not the damnation out of my modern sideboard. So we'll go ahead and move along to the next one. Well, for reference, 9 to 5 for me, if I'm streaming 9 to 5, that means I'm working like 8.30 to 6 with the way streaming works, but I'll be here. I'll be here from 9, nine to 5 or so. I'm going to go ahead and click submit. Yeah, let's do it. And yeah, for those of you that like to catch me live, uh, I'm doing one to two of the older Magic Online leagues in the morning with Modern Legacy, and then I'm doing four to five hours with four or five different uh, standard decks every afternoon. So if you're interested in having one of your standard decks on play, on stream at some point in the future to be played, I'm going to be churning through my standard queue very quickly, so the turnaround time is going to be very short. If you're interested in submitting one of those decks that's just $10 for subscribers to get their deck into the queue, be happy to get your deck on stream at some point in the near future. I don't know how often Hoogle After Dark is going to happen, Bulletproof Pope. My, my viewer numbers in the evening are much worse because a lot of my normal viewer base watches during the day. Also, running a late stream when I plan to be up at nine, nine o'clock to do another morning stream is tough. I'm an I'm an old man. I can't do the the up till midnight, two a.m. and then wake up at eight. Any estimate on how many packs I've opened? Uh, probably about two fifty per set. Well, good news is both our hands suck. Hopefully this Thief of Sanity lives. Can you explain how Standard works? Uh, standard is a constructed magic format where you build 60 card decks that come from a card pool. Was that a good draw? I think that was a good draw. Um, that come from a card pool of between five and eight legal sets that rotate, meaning half of them leave once per year. I would love 
the dive down. Thank you. Just borrow your protection here. Always use protection, chat. Remember, if you don't use protection, you're going to end up with Declan, okay? That's just, that's just the facts. Yeah, every, every October sets rotate. So in October, going into October, we'll have eight legal sets. And then when October hits, the oldest four sets will rotate out when a new fifth set gets introduced. I never said Declan was a bad thing. I just said, if you don't use protection, you're gonna end up with him. It wasn't, that wasn't a, a positive or negative connotation. It was just like a, this is the fact statement. Do I want to spell pierced? I think I might take a lava coil. I have this kite sail freebooter to poke at their hand a little bit here. I'm going to take their discovery here because I could just uh, dive down their lava coil. And I'm actually going to play an untapped land rather than my tapped watery grave because I would like to dive down and, and not get spell pierced when I do it. So I'm gonna feel a little bit bad if they draw another removal spell, but I'd rather just like not have access to cycle through their deck. All right, they get to Niv Mizzet next turn and we get to Hostage Taker the Niv Mizzet. Sha sha sha. Just borrow all their cards here. Thief of Sanity is such a sweet card. I don't know. I don't know what the best thought erasure Thief of Sanity deck is in this format, but I definitely think that that's that's what I want to find at some point. Niv miss it, please. Yoink. Alright, I would like dive downs and counter spells out of your deck. They're at three, right? Alright, I'll take the shock in case we find another shock. And in for spell peers. Alright, onward, upward, backward, forward to the third game. Yeah, Pirates is a good one. I think there's a good mid-range deck though, one that has a little bit more, a little bit more oomph. The four four erasure. This build's been kinda kinda been sweet. I don't I don't necessarily know that this deck needs the red cards in it. Angrath's a sweet card, don't get me wrong, but just like erasure. Freebooter, Thief of Sanity, Hostage Shaker, like this core has been really good. And I could see like just at the top end playing like the 6-6 six, six demon could potentially be good too. Or splashing a color in a different direction, like playing say, you know, a green splash for Assassin's Trophy could be great as well. Yeah, having, having eight discard spells to precede our Thief of Sanities and our Hostage Shakers seems really good. I think this is going to go ahead and be my last game of the day, folks. Thanks, everyone, for hanging out. I've been going for a little over eight hours. I'm going to publish a bunch of stuff on YouTube here in a hot second. There's going to be a bunch of uh, standard decks as well as the legacy deck that we played this morning during our Magic Online segment. See, I need some lands, but like it's got Thought Erasure and Discovery, so it's probably going to be able to find them. It's got plenty of disruption too between the discard spells and the removal. Yeah, Dive Down could be pretty reasonable.
fantastic. So, well, a Erasure, take a removal spell next turn and surveil into our third land. Play Thief of Sanity on three, run away with the game. That shock on one mean they have a spell pierce? Feels like spell pierce, right? I guess we'll find out because they're discovering. Yeah, thief thief isn't like hostage shaker in that it gives back the card after after you do the thing. Woof, that hand is really good. Huh. I think I'm supposed to take the Murmuring Mystic here and just plan to play through their removal spells on my threats. That could be another line. Taking Coil so Taker lives could be reasonable as well. could go a couple different ways. The Murmuring Mystic runs away with the game very quickly, and Murmuring Mystic makes our Eldest Reborns a lot worse, which is kind of kind of feels bad. Uh. Woof. That's unfortunate. They're also missing land four, but they've played far fewer cantrips than we have. I assume they're going to shock this in response to the trigger. If they don't, that would be great for us. Yep, yep. Yeah. I guess I guess if they if they like play out a land here, I can like play Nickel Bolas, they'll have to discard a lava coil. And then like the lava coil, the nickel bolas with the other one, and then maybe hostage shakers can take over the game. If I hit running lands here, we might have a chance. Leave running lands though, running untapped lands explicitly. Yeah, that's just not gonna be good enough. Kind of a disappointing end of the game. Yeah, this was this was game three, so we're all all done. Yeah, all, all things considered, I think, um, just like this, this core of these, these 16 cards, I don't know what necessarily, like, I, I would like to find a good mid-range slash control deck that plays these 16 cards. I don't know what all the correct surrounding pieces are for those 16 cards, but that core felt very flexible and reasonable, a good mix of like having interaction and also being proactive a reasonable amount that felt really good. Um, I think the Dire Fleet Poisoners were probably too cute here. I think in a non-dedicated Pirates deck, this is like fine as like a two to three of somewhere for like aggressive matchups and, and like sniping Carnage Tyrants, but I felt like kind of awkward as a whole, worse than like just like Lava Coils or more cast downs or other removal spells would have been. Um, Angrath continues to impress in the games that we play it. This is one of the cards I'm really looking forward to playing with when we get Blood Crypt in the next set. And uh, at any rate, that's going to be it for me for today. I've been going for uh, a little over eight hours, so I'm going to go ahead and call it. Um, I will be live at some point this weekend. I need to talk to my boss to find out when exactly she's okay with me streaming, but I will post on uh, Twitter and tag people in the subs discord. You'll get a notification if you're following the channel, of course. So thanks everyone for the support. I'll catch you all here. And then everybody have a good start to your weekend. And thanks for tuning in today. I do appreciate it.